we start. I would need your feedback uh, about the voice control. Do you hear me? Is everything okay? Please use your chat to signal this. You won't be able to see me. We are going without camera this time for the better quality of the sounds uh, and our connection. Perfect. I see feedback that you can hear me. Great. Next question is, do you see the presentation? You should be able to see the cover page of the presentation. Perfect. Let me start then. Welcome to the week two of the course, How to Make Things Work, Achieving Results. Welcome to the second webinar of this course. The objectives of this webinar would be to discuss week two of the course. Uh -huh. Tumer is asking whether there is any particular reason why I might not hear anything. Yes, probably it's something related either to your uh, uh, hearing system or the connection. Yeah, Alexander is suggesting that you restart Skype because all the others are here on well. Tumar, I hope that you will be able to catch up so that I continue. In the case you don't manage it, then you will be able to uh, hear to see the webinar once it is posted in the course. The objectives of this webinar are to discuss the second week of the course, what are the objectives, what is expected from you, and what are the key topics that are in week two, which are related to your assignments. We'll go in details in designing, uh, uh, in discussing especially the fifth assignment, and we will mention the other two that are part of this week. And also, this will be an opportunity for you to address all open issues that you might have related to this week, as well as related to the assignments that we are going to discuss. Some of you know me already. My name is Jelena Janowska. And I'm one of the three lecturers as part of this course. Some of you uh, know me from the module related to uh, business communication in one of the previous courses. Then I was talking to you about my experience in communications, in business communication in particular. Now I will present to you my uh, 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 the other part of my portfolio related to project management. I have more than 17 years of experience in international organizations, extensive project management experience in this context. I have managed literally tens, uh, close to hundreds of different projects. I have also been grants manager, so I have managed a portfolio of projects. I have, during my career, reviewed, assessed over 1,000 project proposals for coming from different non-governmental organizations mainly. I'm also a trainer and consultant in various organizational development topics, and I'm a university lecturer in communication-related topics, project management, and fundraising. The focus of this week, you already know by reading all the materials, I will just repeat the key aspects that the, the intention with this week is to introduce the role of the project manager, the characteristics that the project manager has to have, and the tasks and the responsibilities he or she is having, and also to start your project design. In particular, this module discusses the types of organization of project teams, the role of a project manager, how to plan a project, how to structure a project, and how to make a work breakdown structure and project timeline. We will, in particular, during this webinar, deal with the uh, last three topics mainly, although we'll mention the second one as well. First, I have a question for you to start this discussion. Uh, how do you see the role of the project manager? Have you been so far in your professional career a project manager? If yes, how did you see that role? If not, how do you think the ideal project manager should look like? Please use the chat to start this discussion, to provide your answer, to provide your feedback, to provide your experience on the role of the project manager. I will, I will wait for a couple of seconds for you to write. 
but please share your opinion from what you have read so far, but also from what you know from the practice, what should be the role of the project manager? I don't see anybody writing, so I'm encouraging you to share your thoughts with me and with your colleagues as well. <coughs> I see Tomer writing. I hope that everything is okay now with your sound and that you can hear the question and respond to it. Aha. Tumur says, thank for the tip about restarting Skype. I see some other people writing. Okay, I won't provide answer to this question since you don't want to talk, if you don't want to write. Aha, here we are. During this international project we had started a couple of weeks back, I see that project manager has the role of foreseeing the whole process, make it run smooth. Yeah, a very good point. Tomer, the project manager does not have to do it all, but he or she needs to have the oversight overall coordination of the whole process and to make sure you say uh, make it run smooth I would say achieve results and I will elaborate it later on in my presentation. So basically the project manager is the one who should make sure that project activities are well managed starting from planning the organization the management of the activities the control the coordination so everything related from the project planning to project evaluation on one hand and on the other hand the role of the project manager is to also manage the environment when we speak about the environment we speak about the environment of the project including the organization itself so relations with the management of the organization where the project is happening, relationship with partners, relationship with, with clients, donors, collaborators, etc. So this is a very serious role. As you will see on the picture in the right, uh, this person needs to balance, needs to work with the schedule, with the costs, and very important with the performance. So this person has to make it happen has to make the project happen starting from implementation of the schedule as plan managing within the plan budget making it cost effective but also and of utmost importance is to have the performance there to have the results to have the deliverables that need to be delivered with the project therefore the knowledge and skills that are required from such a person are very important very uh, very broad, let's say, starting from organizational skills, management, knowledge and skills, technical skills in the focus of the project, the administrative, and I have separated the communication skills because they are very, very important since the coordination role uh, relies with, lies with the project manager, it's very important how she or he is able to communicate with the surrounding, but also with the team that is in charge for the implementation of the project. I won't lecture you in any of the topics that are part of uh, this second week, because it is expected that you have read the materials and that you have seen the videos, at least most of them, and that you are ready to start this discussion and exchange here with me and with your colleagues. But however, in this presentation, I put the key issues that are related to your assignments that will give us the ground for discussion on any questions that you might have related to the assignments. So I'll continue with project planning, what project planning is. Basically, project planning is uh, assuming all the responsibilities, all the activities, all the outputs that the project should produce. Basically, putting on paper uh, planning about everything related to the project from the project definition to project evaluation and this includes 
project definition, creating the organizational scheme or who will do what within the project implementation, how the resources will be used, what are the resources that are needed for successful implementation of the project, the project schedule or the timeline, how the project will be implemented through the time, the overview of estimated costs, the plan to avoid risks, because uh, it is really important that all issues that can go wrong are planned in, the, in advance, and moreover, the solutions, the bridging actions are planned as well. And description of procedures and instructions, list of standards and tools to be used in the project. This is how uh, the project plan or the project schedule can look like, and this is related to your fifth assignment. This is a list of things that are to be done within the project and all the resources, skills, competences, effort related to these activities. So you have the activity name, the description of the activity, the owner, that's uh, the, the, the term that is used in your materials, and I would like to translate it into responsibility. So who is responsible for what? Who is responsible for which activity? Other resources except the human resources that are needed. What are the skills, the competence, and experience that are needed? It's very important because not for every activity, not every person of the team will be able to perform in a best manner. So you might, doing this project plan or schedule, figure out that for some of the activities you have to outsource because inside, in-house, you don't have the competences or skills needed. Then estimated effort and duration. How much time does each activity take? And what are the key dates that are related to the implementation of these activities? For example, when certain events will happen, which are very important for the implementation of the project. And what are the dependencies and constraints when doing? Uh, we will discuss it later on when we do the segmentation of the project. You have to see that some activities depend on others and some activities might be endangered by other activities not happening not happening properly or not happening at all or being postponed or being influenced by internal or external factors so all these things have to be planned in advance when you do such project plan or schedule it is very important to determine what are what are the milestones the milestones are the most important activity activities which are coming uh, throughout the project implementation, which can really show you that you are going in the right direction. These are the, the, the most important results, the most impo important achievements that you need to achieve along the way to make your project happen. So these are things that you should also mark in this project planner schedule and make sure that they happen with the quality that you have planned for. Another important issue about project planning is project structuring. And here, one of the approaches that is suggested is the work breakdown structure, which is actually the process of breaking down components as phases of a project into smaller units until coming to final activities, which can still be attributed a result. You will see in the next slide, I transform this explanation into work that needs to be done in order to achieve the results. Therefore, on the right hand side, I have put um, this uh, word results that need to be achieved. So basically, the work breakdown structure shows you what you need to do in order to get to the results that your project has foreseen. And there are different ways how you can do structuring. Uh, here, there are some of the criteria that you might use, such as product components, functions, time phases, organizational units, geographical areas, or your own judgment if you have experience in project management. The point is here that it is very difficult to implement a whole list of 200 activities that you might foresee in your project without thinking about them, without structuring them somehow, and without trying to link them with one another. That's the point of the work of breakdown structure 
to see how the activities that you are going to implement to achieve the results are to be structured in a logical way in order to help you to see the relations among them and to have a smoother implementations, implementation of your project. Here I have bolded some of the criteria uh, only because I think that this is, these are the most common ways of structuring by using the functions of the project and using the time phases of the project. And I would suggest that when you do your project planning and your project structuring, you test both of these uh, structuring criteria so that you structure your project based on the functions that the project is going to do, is going to have, is going to implement, and also the time phases, the time sequencing, let's say, uh, which um, uh, uh, provides a chronological order how the activities, how the packages within your project should be implemented. Of course, here, based on the experience, on the practical experience that you have with project management, you can decide to uh, use one of the other criteria or even introduce your own criteria, how you structure your project. But it is really important that you don't only provide a list of activities let's say a brainstorming list of activities that you have planned for the project, but organize them and structure them in a logical way. So uh, this is an illustration only how this might look like, just to get you an idea uh, what it is about. So once again, it is the work to be done to achieve the project, ob project objectives and create the foreseen deliverables, what the project needs to deliver and how we organize around it. So there are numerous way how, ways how you can do it. This is only one proposal uh, by key deliverables. For example, your project plans to have deliverable one, two, three, etc. And this is one package of activities. Under the deliverable, you have the work package. If you have many activities, those activities can form a work package or, or it, can, it can be a single activity, let's say activity one, one, or even you can break down the activities into concrete tasks. Who has to do what to make this activity implemented and to make this deliverable achievable. And this goes for everything you plan to do within your project. So you can have several deliverables, you can have several work packages, under them several activities broke down into several tasks. Of course, this goes for a more complicated, more complex projects, while for simple projects, you will have also simple structure that reflects. The point is here to see all the activities that need to be implemented, how they are linked with one another, to make sure that you have not, you, you, you have not omitted to put some of the important activities, which will then endanger the achievement of deliverables and in the end of the day, the achievement of the, of, the, of the overall objective of the project. Is this clear until now? Do you have any questions? All clear and good. I'll go on. I'll go on explaining the assignments for this week. We have three assignments, basically. Two of these assignments, evaluation should go after. Yes, evaluation is planned after. We, we are not yet to explain the evaluation. So this is only uh, the project planning when it comes to the objective, deliverables, and activities. Evaluation is, of course, part of project planning, but we are not yet there. It is clear. Good. Feel free anytime, even while I'm, I'm speaking, to ask anything or to stop me or to raise an issue that or you wish us to explore. When it comes to the assignments for this week, you have three. Two of them are teamwork and one is individual. I'm assessing two of these, these assignments and my colleague Pinar is assessing the fourth one. So I will be assessing assignment three and assignment five. Assignment three is a teamwork related to defining project organization. The deadline is tomorrow. The assignment four is defining the risks of the project and that is individual work. You have a simple table when you, where you need to list the risks related to the concrete project you're working on and also to uh, provide 
an idea on what are going to be these mitigation measures that are to be implemented in order to avoid such situation or to solve the issue if it happens in the real life. The deadline for this is 19th of November. And assignment 5 is related to the structuring the project and timeline, and it's also a teamwork. The deadline is 22nd of November, because this is the biggest of these assignments. And I will pay more attention to this assignment in my next slides to explain, to explain what you need to do. Although for all three assignments you have clear instructions in uh, the material uh, online, you have explanation for each of these uh, assignments and my colleague, as I saw in the first webinar, introduced you to the grading system. Nevertheless, I will provide uh, more information about assignment 5, which is a bit more complex. When it comes to assignment 3, defining project organization, you just need to plan who does what within your project. What will be the organigram of your project? Who will be responsible for what? Who will be the project manager and who will implement the activities? Who is doing what within the project planning and project implementation? I'll now go, go on to assignment five to explain what you need to do there. And all these slides that I had before are in preparation for this. Basically, you have to do the two tables, two charts that I have explained. So first of all, uh, use this presentation for doing the assignments, but also use the course material. Use the videos and the guidelines below the assignment for preparing for the assignment. Just follow the instructions and you will be OK. You will have to divide your project into smaller units of work, activities, work packages, as in the example that I have used before. Very important thing is that when doing this segmentation, when doing this structuring, every activity must have a result. So this is really important. I was going through the materials and I saw one interesting sentence over there saying that in the end of the day, you're not asking your colleague whether he or she worked, but you ask what is the result of your work. Good bosses do not ask you when you have done your job, how much time you have spent, did you do it early in the morning and spend the rest of the day reading newspapers or you did it during night or you worked 24 seven. It is important to have the result that has been planned in the end of the day. So please, for any of the activities that you are going to put in this structuring, make sure that there is a result related to that activity, that there is some outcome as a result of that activity. Uh, another thing you need to do is to draw the structure of your project so that you can check if you took into account all the activities, similar uh, with the chart I presented to you. So basically, you put on paper all your activities, you structure them in logical sequences using one of the criteria that I have described before, be it functions or time sequencing or location sequencing if you are doing parallel activities, for example, in Turkey, Macedonia, and Slovenia. This can be one of your criteria for structuring your project. For each activity, you need to determine owner or the responsibility, as I mentioned before, the duration, and the dependency on other activities. And this was all presented in the table I showed you before. So basically, these two things are or should be the results of assignment five. You should work together with your team to list all the activities, to structure them well, to organize them well, to present them in the form of the work breakdown structure. I propose that here you use two, you prepare two such uh, charts, one using functions as criteria and the second one using time phases as criteria, which will uh, make sure that you haven't forgotten any of the important activities that need to be implemented to make the project objective implemented. So that's, that's the proposal. You might want to decide to go with other criteria, and that's your free choice. This is just a suggestion so that you practice this tool, but also you make sure that everything is on paper that you plan to do. 
The next uh, part, the right part of the screen, is the project plan. So basically it's a table which clearly explains uh, the activities that you are going to undertake and describes them related to what you're going to do, who is going to do it, what are the resources needed, what are the skills and experience that are needed to uh, implement that activity, what's the duration and estimated effort for that activity, and what are the things that you should be careful about. Related to other activities which might influence the activity you are describing, but also some constraints that might happen. That's all that I have. So we have used 26 minutes of our time for me, for explaining what we are talking about in uh, this second week of the course, and also to explain what you need to do within your teams. So we will use the rest of the time for your possible questions that you might have, dilemmas uh, related to these specific assignments. I have heard that you have some uh, issues in your team organization. Is it going smoothly now? Are you okay? Uh, are you progressing well? Is there a prospect that you can do all these things that are requested from you as part of assignment five? And everything else that you might wish to open up now in the discussion part of this webinar. Please feel free. Okay, I will wait some additional two, three minutes. If there are no questions, if there are no topics that you want to face, I will slowly close this down. Anything unclear? Any questions that you wish to raise? Any doubts about these two tools that you are suggested to use? Do you think that this will provide the answers to all the dilemmas that you have related to your project? Can you work in Excel for the project plan, not to use offer links in literature? Of course. Feel free to use any tool that you find useful, that you find easy for you to use. Excel is perfectly fine. And very often when planning projects, we use, we use Excel. Uh, we don't explore all the tools that are uh, available to, for doing project management, obviously. We have selected some of them only. But many of the things we do within project management, project planning, are done in Excel, even in PowerPoint. For example, when we do so-called results metrics, I won't bother you uh, too much with that, but that's how the results you want to achieve are interrelated with one another, what factors influence, etc. So you do an analysis how uh, you're going to achieve your results. For better visualization of such uh, tool, we use PowerPoint. So yeah. You can use anything you wish. Somebody asked whether there is anyone from Team 5, and here Dimitri says that he is from Team 5. Are there any particular issues, problems with Team 5? Even those members of your team who weren't present during this webinar will be able to see it online and just make up for all that they have missed during this half hour. Any other questions, dilemmas? Please use my presence to get answers to all the dilemmas that you might have had while reading the material or thinking about your assignments or doing the work within your teams, whatever comes to your mind.
yeah you just wanted to make sure that everyone else is available in here so you have one more person everything is okay from for you there are no questions good perfect did you have the chance to read the material is everything clear when it comes to the material when you open the links yes good when you open the links with the youtube uh, videos you will see uh, tens of videos related to that topic so don't feel free to read and listen to only the things that we have provided but also feel free to use other resources because there is a plenty of lit literature on this obviously uh, all three uh, lectures that you have within this course are with different background Pinar is academic, uh, Tanya is coming from the business sector, I am into non-profit project manager, management, so please use this diversity of expertise that we are bringing to answer to your questions. So as you will notice, especially those of you that are working in the business sector or working for the government or non-governmental sector, uh, principles of project management are the same, but the tools that are used uh, and the titles that are given to these tools might be different. Otherwise, the key principles are the same, and that's to plan well, to have an objective which is tangible, achievable, but also brings improvement, brings something new, brings new value. Then to have a good project organization and to follow the project implementation cycle, cycle steps in the project implementation cycle, which are formulated in a logical way. So they bring you from one phase to another in order to achieve what you have foreseen. So basically that's the ABC of project management. The details are coming from the different sectors that you're working with. So please use the experience that the three of us are bringing from different sectors in order to get answers to your questions. Okay, if we don't have anything else, I will uh, wish you a nice evening. I will thank you for your attention. You have my email, you have my contacts. Mina is there to support you when you do the assignments with all the details related to that. I'm here to respond to any questions related to the topic, especially of this week that you might wish to raise with me. So please feel free to write to me with any dilemmas you might have. I will provide you um, my expertise on that issue. I'm here to support the planning of your projects. And of course, I will be here to uh, do uh, the assessment of your projects. I will grade them, these two that I have mentioned. Uh, those who know me from the previous course know that I have provided comments to each and every of you for each and every submission that you have made. So make sure, be sure, be ensured that this time I will also do that. So for any submission that is in my responsibility, this is assignment three and assignment five, you will get feedback and it will be graded according to the criteria. Thank you very much. Enjoy the evening. Uh, enjoy the rest of the course. And I wish you much success in the implementation of this course in the planning of your projects and I hope that in the future I will hear that you have implemented also some of the great ideas that you have designed with you, your teams that this is not only an exercise but that you can um, bring in something new as a new added value of these uh, mixed teams of students of participants from different countries talk to you bye bye